Hi there. My name is Tercy Engelhardt, and I'd like to welcome you to the Unreasonably Grateful Podcast, Living in Grace by Choice. And for those of you who have been with me for a while, every week you hear this, and I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you back if you've been here before, and I want to welcome you if this is your first time or maybe your second or third time and let you know that I'm honored to be a part of your journey. And I'm grateful that you get to be a part of mine. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Every week, I also remind people that I don't have your answers. Whatever brought you here, however you found out about this podcast, I know you're not here for me to answer your questions or fill in the gaps in your journey. However, I have learned that when I listen to other people share their stories, I see something for myself. And oftentimes it's something I wouldn't be able to see if they weren't sharing. And when they share it and I see it, it gives me some freedom. It gives me a little bit more room to progress in my own journey. And it's my hope that there's something that you'll hear and maybe you've heard it before, and maybe it's just now's the right time for it to sink in, to have more meaning, and to actually give you the encouragement or the inspiration or the awareness or the wisdom that you need to just take the next step in your own journey. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. You know, my story is just a collection of little wisdoms that I've learned over 38 years uh, of being on a healing journey of recovering from teenage sexual abuse and then 20 years of living an addictive lifestyle, um, keeping that abuse a secret and struggling with an eating disorder. And now 38 years later, which sometimes I have it hard to believe, I can still remember the feeling of I can't get through one day And here it is, 38 years. So it's my hope that that wisdom does something for you, takes you a little further. So also on Tuesdays, I offer individual sessions. And what a session is really is it's a video opportunity by donation for us to connect at a deeper level, for you to share whatever it is you'd like for me to hear. And for me to reflect back to you what I see and I hear. And oftentimes, being an elder in the community, what I see and what I hear is a much clearer view or vision of who you are than the one that you're holding, one that perhaps is guiding or directing your path. And sharing what I see and what I hear encourages you, inspires you, and again, takes you a little bit further down your journey. So if you're interested in that, you can sign up under Work Together at TerseyEnglehart.com. So look forward to seeing you there. Okay, so this week I'm actually following up on last week's episode. And last week's episode was entitled, There's No Such Thing as Quitting. And I ended the episode with a few questions for you to look at where in your life you may be confronted or wanting to quit. And the question was, who's quitting? What are you quitting? Who are you quitting on? What's the underlying um, connection that you want to break, the underlying commitment that you want to sever? And this week is a follow-up to that and then a little tidbit on prayer. So I want you to consider, as I discover, that when I want to quit, who I'm really quitting on is me, is myself. And that's why I say there's no such thing as quitting. Because you can quit, but you're still there. I don't know who was the first person who gets the credit for saying, wherever you go, there you are. But I give that person credit, whoever they may be. And I want to 
say that again. Like you can quit on you, but you're going to wake up as you in the next minute, the next moment. Your life is a journey. And no matter where you are, that's one of the pieces of that journey. And it's precious and it's valuable and it's priceless. And sometimes it's excruciating and challenging and hopeless and difficult. And other times it's joyous and freeing and empowering and exciting. And all of those are just stepping stones on this journey called your life. Uncovering more of who you are moving closer to the truth of who you are created to be, discovering who that is, being willing to let love in, being willing to let love out, like being in that flow of unconditional love longer and returning there more quickly. And that's the journey. And we all fall short of that. We all detour off of it. We exit off of that that path and go down sometimes long forbidden trails that lead to nowhere except back to the journey that we were designed and intended to be on. So if who you're quitting on is you, then I guess my question would be, since you can't, what's another option? Last week, I think I shared and presented with you that usually when we butt up against that experience of wanting to quit, we're on the verge of a breakthrough. But from this side, we can't see it. And so part of it is believing, believing in faith that there is another side to whatever it is you're confronted with right now. And again, if I look back, well, I'll even just look forward. If I look back is what I was going to say. I remember uh, thinking there must be a way, there must be a way for me to experience more of who I really am, as opposed to me being continually trapped and stuck inside of the survival, addictive lifestyle I was living. But I didn't actually know what that looked like. And quite honestly, every day I still still discover a little bit more of who I am. And then I shared with you about this implant that I'm actually now having removed in one week. And I noticed myself preparing for it. And while I've had lots of nightmares and dreams about it going horribly, I'm working on imagining a brighter future, even though it feels as if, as I shared with the surgeon, it feels as if I'm paying a lot of money for something I don't want. However, I'm trusting that something's going to be available that's not available now, that this is another step in the journey called my life. And while I'm confronted and discouraged and disappointed and maybe a little afraid, I'm trusting that there's no reason that my journey would take a turn towards something that wasn't moving me further along and closer to being someone who could let more love in and let more love out, which ultimately, I believe, is the goal of all of us. So that's, that's, the, that's what I'm working on right now. That's the step of my journey I'm in. And I've also shared with you that I have a grandchild who's struggling right now. And today I was talking to one of our family members, and they made the comp, and I said, you know, keep them keep them in your prayers. They can use all the love and prayerful, uh, yeah, prayerful expressions you can send. And they said, well, prayer's not working. And I said almost instantly without thinking, well, how do you know that? Like, 
We don't know that. And that's the thing about prayer. That's the tidbit I want to share with you. Sometimes we think, because we're not getting what we want, that our prayers are going unanswered. And I want to suggest that that's not necessarily true. That sometimes it may look like a stall or a detour or even no response. But prayer is continuing to believe in the best and the greatest will. And you and I, we don't always know what that is. And thinking that we do is probably sideways thinking. So that's my tidbit on prayer. You won't necessarily know if prayer is working in the moment or the moments that you're praying. Sometimes you do, but not always. And if what you see isn't what you want, that doesn't mean that prayer's not working either. So think about that this week. And I'll be here next week. And I look forward to seeing you then. Have a beautiful week.